It's time for Living Your Purpose, a motivational and inspirational podcast with Peter and Joyce Nielsen. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Living Your Purpose podcast. I'm with my lovely wife, Joyce Nielsen, and uh, I'm Peter Nielsen. And we just love being here with you. It's only been a few weeks that we've been on video on YouTube. So if you do like this, just click the subscription uh, uh, button and we love to have you join us every single Thursday, every week. You know, we're going into this new season tomorrow on the calendar. I saw on my phone, they're closing the pool. They put this cover on it. We, we live on about two and a half acres and it's just filled with dozens and dozens of beautiful two, 300 year old oak trees. But around this time of the year, you can't even see the driveway because the leaves have already started to shed. <laughs> and the skies get gray, it seems like, until April. So I think it was last week we talked about winter bodies. Summer bodies were made in the winter. We did. We yeah. did. So it was all about exercise. And today what we want to do is we want to stay and help you go through this, just evolve in this transition through summer to fall and with nutrition, 60 to 70% on how you look and how you feel has to do with what you put this little circle called your mouth. So what I wanted to do is talk about some superfoods, some foods that you may not have as a staple in your refrigerator or in your cupboard. Uh, I always say that, you know, a produce section of your grocery store, color is king. And a lot of people are getting ready to go um, to apple orchards this time of the year. We haven't done it yet with the kids, but no, we will. Yeah, it's definitely on the yeah, agenda, though. It's definitely on the agenda, <laughs> usually for like, you know, either it's late September or mid-October, we'll go to that apple orchard, um, Mary's in Livonia, Michigan. I mean, just amazing. Plymouth Apple Orchard, great place. But there's so many different variations of apples. Some are better for cooking. Some are actually better nutritionally and you know your delicious apple which is that brilliant dark or lightish red on the skin for example has all these antioxidants called anthocyanins and what they do is they actually help to protect your heart they strengthen your blood vessels in your brain and then we have another antioxidant called quercetin and what that does is it helps with your heart health and then we got polyphenols and phileic acid, and they're all to truly help lower the risk of certain cancers, heart disease, brain health. And then, oh, by the way, there's a lot of fiber in your apple, so it's gonna help uh, keep your appetite at bay. It's gonna help you lose, facilitate excess body fat, and one other statistic that I think you even just, you love to cook and you're a great, a great cook, um, is that the average person, how many apples do you think that they would eat in, the, in a year? In a year? In one year. Oh, geez. Um, well, we eat a lot here in our home because I know my kids love them for snacks and their lunches. And I'll even add them to salads or dip them in some peanut butter or something. So... Uh, I don't know. I eat maybe three or four a week times 52 weeks. So you do the math. <laughs> right. So, you know, so you're thinking about a, few, a couple hundred, right? It's 120 apples per person on average, which equates to 40 pounds of that stuff wow. of apples. <laughs> so, you know, and I haven't said this on my TV show. I may have said it years ago on my radio show, but I'll say it here on this podcast. If I took a bite out of an apple, I start getting itchy throat. I start getting um, mucus. You know, my no nose starts getting stuffy. I have something called topical allergies to certain fruits, nuts, walnuts, pecans. I'm going to do a whole nother show on that. Apples, plums, peaches, uh, kiwi. Um, I feel so bad for him. It's all the good stuff. Right. But there is hope. If you heat, if you heat just an apple, you know, for say 10, 20 seconds, you know, at a certain temperature, 
it denatures that protein within that apple or within that walnut or within that, you know, um, pecan. And then I'm able to eat it. So I can't have apple cider, but I can have pasteurized apple juice, which is heated. And a lot of the nutrients are taken out. So I'll be the first to say that. So it's just important to know on how apples are just a great, great staple, not only for the fall, but for year round, for all the reasons I just said. You know, and then another thing that I always think of is as the kids were, were um, growing up, you know, me being Italian, pasta, the average pasta plate is 800 calories. Uh. Now check this out. I'm just gonna give you a quick Peter's Principles moment. The average person could only digest 75 grams of carbs within a 90 minute period of time. That equates to 300 calories. So let's just, pasta's all carbs. So if it's 800 calories, and your body could only utilize 300 calories of carbs, that means 500 calories is going right here to your, your butt. And you're talking right about the, the noodles, right? Yeah, or the are noodles. You talking about the whole No, shebang? I'm just talking about just the noodles. I'm not even talking about the shebang <laughs> of the cheese and the artery clogging fat. And if you go Alfredo, you're at literally like 1,400 calories. I mean, you might as well have sh shot yourself in the foot. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of people, I'm sure I'll get an email, Peter, I'm Italian, I love pasta. But if I love it too much, I'm gonna wear some of it. So I'm just giving you the facts. And the facts is, you know, talking about another alternative for pasta is winter spaghetti squash. I love it, I've done it on the Today Show, I've done it on my TV show. And what we do and what I do is you cut it in half um, so that it's long ways, right? You know, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you could put it face down in a pan, um, could be glass, it could be whatever, with just a little water. And you put that at 350 temperature and you can season it beforehand if you wanted to. And then you basically take it out in like 12 to 15 minutes. You take this out, you let it cool off, you take a fork and you hold it, and you basically are just shaving all of this that looks exactly like spaghetti. And the beautiful thing is, is that instead of having 800 calories per meal, in one cup of spaghetti winter squash, there's only 43 calories. So have I sold you yet? You know, that was one of the things when we first started dating. I do most of the cooking, but this is actually a recipe he showed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's very impressive. And, you know, if, if you mix the right sauce, just maybe saute up some spinach and tomatoes to yeah. top it with. It, yeah. it really is delicious. And you know, and I think if I could get into the carbohydrates for a second before we move on, is that... Pasta is not bad for us. It's just very dense. So the fibrous um, carbo complex carbohydrates that Joyce is talking about, tomatoes and just different things, actually tomatoes and fruit, um, but just different things when it comes to color, your, your peppers, your tomatoes, your um, yellow, your zucchinis, your, all of those are fibrous, your, your cauliflower, your, your broccoli. Those are wonderful because they, they're they not dense. So there's more water in it. So it's less caloric. So you can eat almost this much of a dish worth of fibrous um, complex carbohydrates, all these colorful vegetables versus a dish this big of pasta that's 800 calories. <laughs> And, and might I add, if you're like, oh, squash really isn't my thing, you can also do zucchini. Right. So, yeah, yeah, there's lots yeah. of options out there other than the wheat noodles. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, a lot of people have celiac disease. As I've gotten older, I have a gluten intolerance as well as a lactose intolerance. So if I don't want to feel bloated, you know, where I'm just like extended, uncomfortable, 
I stay away from pasta. Every once in a while, I'm human. Pasta to me is a cheat. The way veggie pizza with no cheese is a cheat to me. Um, and I always will love that. But remember, you are what you eat. So if you live like we do, you know, 95% is healthy. And then when we go out to dinner, we want a piece of dessert or we want to cheat with the kids with pizza. We'll get half, um, half of the pizza is cheeseless for myself and maybe Joyce and the kids if they still want some cheese. They're still very healthy and they limit themselves to cheese as well. Yeah, because they're both a little dairy sensitive yep. too, un unlike myself. But I've adapted to the family style <laughs> and I feel but I do feel better. I mean, back in the day when I was in my 20s, <laughs> I could live on cheese, cheese and grapes, and that would be it. But it catches up to you, even if you're not it does intolerant catch up to, you, to it. It's still, yeah. as you yeah. get older, which gracefully, Hopefully, you know, every day is a blessing we all do. We need to change our habits and to maintain that physique that we had when we were younger. Agreed, you know, and, and there's just like one, one more fruit that a lot of people don't think about. But, you know, it's just a, a, a piece of fruit that would go great for transcending into winter, which is your pears. It's got lutein in it. It's got, I know in your, it's got phytonutrients in it. And so it's so sweet. It's like a decadent dessert or something. Right. But the point is, is, you know, you don't want to live on that. But having some pears, it lowers, it has lowered some stroke studies by literally like 60%. And it has so much to do with the fiber. Studies aren't talking about on how it truly has a few superfoods when it comes to antioxidants that are just cancer fighters. So again, like Joyce just said, there's a glycemic index and all the berries, and it's from zero to 100. And 100 is like pure sugar, glucose. And um, zero is, is no sugar. All foods have some sugar. So you want to try to stay at 55 or lower on the glycemic index. Your blueberries, your blackberries, your strawberries, your raspberries, all low glycemic. Your apple, low glycemic. Your pear is a little higher. Mm -hmm. So you need to know that knowledge is power. You know, you got some great suggestions when it comes to winter foods. I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, actually, just talking about the berries, on a side note, for breakfast, I found this really delicious. It's made from a coconut milk yogurt, so it's a non-dairy yogurt, and I'll just mix like a vanilla flavor of that and add those berries to it, and it makes such a nutritious, fulfilling breakfast that, or I even have it for dessert sometimes as a substitute, and it's so good. Yeah, you, <laughs> she takes care of herself great. We work out together, yeah. and we, you know, even when we go shopping together, it's just, I never met someone that has so many wonderful commonalities, um, just about lifestyle, yeah. adventure, I'm so thankful if you have a partner that likes the same variety of food, especially when it comes to spice. spice and anyone that likes spice hot. out there knows what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> if you're with a family that doesn't like spice, oh, yeah. and you do, it's really hard. We go through but cayenne pepper more than probably people go through cayenne <laughs> pepper. We should invest paper. in the stock. <laughs> the cayenne pepper is an anti inflammatory, mm -hmm. it brings inflammation down, yeah. but it takes a boring piece of food and gives it yeah. a bite to it. So we just love that even in our ginger shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll be talking about some detoxing more as the we as the weeks go on, but there's so many wonderful things that we can do when it comes to the winter. And one of the things that you make that I never really got to eat, I think being single for so long, was sweet potatoes. And And I want you to talk about it, but it's like, Think about it. Anything that's white, white flour, white potatoes, baked potatoes, mm -hmm. white rice, white bread, all are high glycemic and have less nutritional value. White bread, it's white because 
all of the nutrients have been sucked out and it's as cheap as heck to buy it um, and to make it. So the point is, is that when you have something like a potato, a sweet potato or a yam, I mean, I'll let you talk about it, but it's just crazy beneficial to your health. Yeah, and it reminds me of an episode we did in season one, this or that. And it's like, oh my gosh, who doesn't love sometimes a good like French fry? But instead of a French fry, you can make at home homemade sweet potato you make fries. The best. And, and you're going to hear me say the word agave a whole lot, but right. agave is an excellent... Natural sugar from, uh, from uh, monk fruit. Yep. Yes, a great sweetener. Um, anything that calls for like brown sugar or sugar or anything like that, you always swap out with agave. Um, but for the sweet potato recipe, some people like the mash. I'll even just, you can throw it in a microwave or the oven with some olive oil and cayenne and salt on it and bake it. And then just put a little uh, agave and cayenne in the middle to serve it. But for the fries, you just slice them into little circle pieces and spread them out onto a pan. And then you can sprinkle them with a little bit of olive oil, some rosemary, some cinnamon, and some cayenne if you do like it spicy. And then um, I like my stuff crispy because I'm a weirdo. No, it's great. <laughs> so I'll eat all the burnt ones and then it I is. gave the other ones to the rest it of the family. Great. But it's so great to add as like a side dish to say maybe a turkey burger yeah. instead of a beef burger. You know what? I want to just, I want to correct myself. Agave is a plant that is coming from the agave plant. And what I said about monk fruit is coming from, say, stevia. Stevia that you have is coming from say a monk fruit so i just wanted to correct that yeah. but the the um it's interesting think about it agave you can literally extract the sweetness or you can get it in a different season of its life and you can turn it into literally tequila i mean mm -hmm. it's crazy on how you can go from one extreme to another it is. with and, one plant. And by the way, you can ruin a whole dish if you're using, say, vegetable oil instead of the triple olive Ver oil. Virginal. So yeah. that's important too. Yeah. And you can even mix up the taste because the olive oil can come in a robust flavor. That's really, like the that yeah, yeah, the yeah. robust is it's, it's it's delicious. And, and I, if I could say this too, and it's important, a lot of times people, they'll just glaze over triple version olive oil okay and they'll go for sometimes and times are tough so we're going to the grocery store you want to conserve oh, everything's more expensive right now. so you'll see a different olive oil it'll look the same it could be from the same company mm -hmm. but it could be three dollars less the difference is it's not cold pressed which basically defines it as virgin to heat virgin olive oil so if you just see olive oil and it's at a cheaper price and it's not saying cold pressed or it's not saying virgin or triple virgin olive oil um, you're going to get more nutrients because it's not being heated anything that's being heated you're killing off some of the nutrients we we try to kill off some of the bacteria and some of the foods but when it comes to certain things like oils or, or, mm -hmm. or fruit or different things, you may denature that protein so you could eat it. Um, you may kill some bacteria on heating something, but you're losing a lot of nutrients. When it comes to olive oil, you want to get triple version cold pressed olive oil. Yeah, and it even comes in a spray if you're a baker and you like to line, like when I make my quiches and stuff, I use that and could I, I spray it up here I tell them a secret, which I have never said? Oh, I, I don't know. Son, <laughs> <laughs> this is rated PG. No, no. Um, her son is eight years old, Colton, and he loves, he's like, Peter, can you make your Peter popcorn? He says, okay. So I make this air popcorn that has no fat in it mm -hmm. and stuff. And then what I do is I put it in, say, a bowl, and then I spray triple version cold-pressed olive oil spray on it. Mm -hmm. It tastes and looks like buttered popcorn. Right, it's then, buttered popcorn. Then I right? take, and he loves it. It's part of the family, I right. guess. He, we, then I take this crushed red pepper that you would put on, say, pizza or something, 
and I just shake that in there, and then I shake it around, and he literally could eat the whole thing as a snack, and it has such flavor yeah. from the olive oil and the red crushed, um, which is anti-inflammatory, no calories. So that's a, another quick Peter's Principles tip that you could um, invest in with your whole family as a very yeah. low calorie, zero fat, um, low carb snack. By the way, exactly how you season your popcorn is exactly how I season my kale chips. <laughs> and it's another Cal great winter. It's another amazing. great winter vegetable. It's one of my favorite things. Like, put it this way: if you like crunchy stuff, most of us do at night. We just night eaters mm -hmm. are crunchy stuff. And you know, I used to love barbecue potato chips decades ago. So it's like I love that flavor of salty and spicy. She makes kale chips, so they just look dark like kale. But they look like potato chips, and they're crunchy and light. She puts... Yeah, it, oh it's really so easy, and you can flavor it to how you like. But you can just buy a big stalk of the kale and literally take a pair of scissors <laughs> and just cut it up over your board and then sprinkle, pour over the olive oil. And I like pink Himalayan salt and then some of the crushed red pepper. And then you throw it in the oven and yeah cook it as long as you like it i mean again i like my more crispy and about whatever. how long about how long is it um like at 350 for maybe 10 minutes or so but you you have to keep your eye on it and kind of oh you know turn them around and stuff there's but, never any left yeah they're they're so good i mean and even for picky eaters my kids love it and that's something that is in season for this fall um you know and, and when we're eating whether it's a piece of salmon or piece of chicken or turkey the kale chips go with anything they really do and, and think about it even as an appetizer right it's fibrous complex carbohydrates it's one mm. of the most healthiest when it comes to nutritional benefit out of all your you, iceberg you could use as a bowling ball it's 92 percent water <laughs> it, there's hardly no nutrition in there what you want is kale, kale. boston or ro romaine or spinach is basically the top four or five um, lettuce or salads that you can have. Another thing, and I don't want to bore you guys by just like telling you the recipes over this audio when you're driving or grocery <laughs> shopping or whatever. So I'm going to post them. I'm going to post yeah, them good. to your page, to, to his um, Facebook, Peter Nielsen page. But another great thing to make with kale is smoothies. And I perfected what um, is a detox like smoothie. Yeah. And it has kale and ginger and spinach and mango and pineapple and all this other great ingredients with protein powder. Powder and it's so nutritious and healthy and you would never think like okay I I'm not a vegetable eater uh, how am I supposed to get this besides taking vitamins or supplements you They're can so make these right. smoothies and they don't taste They're like vegetables so at all it's right. so good so I'm gonna put that on your page another another one of your specialties um, that oh. I haven't eaten for decades and I never thought I liked because it was a kind of a bitter taste but a superfood that has tremendous amount of benefits um, is Brussels, uh, Brussels sprouts. And now it's like a staple in our home. Yeah. And I can't even believe it. I don't leave any on my plate. <laughs> and it's a great hearty, um, it's just a great hearty vegetable that is so healthy for you. But the way you make it tastes amazing. Yeah, the Brussels sprout. And again, another easy side dish is, and here's this word again, agave. You put some agave and sriracha on there and just roast it or bake it in the oven and move the pieces around, flip them over a little like you're going to do the kale chips. And voila, it. it's a yeah. really nutritious... You know, when we were kids, my mom, I think, and, and I love you, mom, if you're listening, <laughs> but they used to like boil or steam the Brussels sprouts and they'd give it to you as Save a pile of mush on your plate and yeah. maybe pour some processed cheese over it. It was like, oh, like give me a napkin and I'm going to, you know, feed it to the dog <laughs> or something. But <laughs> this is really good. I, I'm telling you. There's so you. many things, yeah. you know, when you think about winter, you think about cranberries 
Mm-hmm. What do you think about? Those are the other holiday traditions. Pumpkin. <sighs> Pumpkin, I mean, lowers the risk of prostate cancer, lowers inflammation. Um, I, you know, I take a, 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 a pumpkin seed extract pill every day, which is, is, is amazing. Any other suggestions that you would have? You, you live in the kitchen so much, but around this time of the year. Yeah, um, another one is going to be beets. And a lot of times when we, we're, we're big foodies and we love to try new restaurants. And one of my favorite things, if there's an appetizer on the menu, I always order it. And it's- You just getting, ordered beets this The weekend. other day. <laughs> and it, they're, you know, you think beets and yes, they're delicious if they're prepared properly. I'm, I'm well, here's a sneak preview. We have a new yes, Peter's yeah. Principles workout drink coming out that is a beet base to it, which is delicious. Yeah. And if I could, it's it's a nitric oxide precursor. So what it does is it dilates your vascular system. So it gives you a pump while you are working out. It's also, if it's dilating with circulation, it's great for your heart. It's also great for your libido because believe it or not, <laughs> in Viagra or Cialis, they have natural precursor, natural um uh, nitric dioxide um, precursors that basically help open up your vascular system. So, oh my golly, I well, was getting Based on just that, if you don't it. like beets, you're going to try recipes <laughs> to find something that you like to eat the beets. <laughs> but um, wait, you put a little balsamic on it. They even sell like non dairy feta cheeses you can sprinkle with it. What, a little was bit that recipe that, what was that recipe that we did on TV with beets? Uh huh. And endives. Endives. Um, the endives, lettuces, and you can chop up the beets, put them on the endives, chop up some cashews, and sprinkle it on with a little of the balsamic. He likes garlic expressions. Um, I prefer more of a sweeter balsamic flavor. So it's really, you just have to experiment, but it's something great to try. And um, I mean, another staple, I guess, would be broccoli. And again, it's like the Brussels sprouts. When I was growing up, you could steam broccoli till it's mush and it can just be like, okay, mom, are we eating broccoli again? But I find that the whole family enjoys it. If I'm more slice it even and put you, some crushed pepper and olive oil and when you grill bake them, it or, or grill them too mm-hmm. you know when you grill the Boil less it. water the less water the more antioxidant properties there was a study with broccoli and um it lost 98 percent of its nutritional value when it was steamed wow 98% when it was, I'm sorry, when it was boiled, when it was steamed, still with water, it lost 60%. Mm-hmm. Microwave lost a lot. The best is when it was either lightly baked or grilled for just a few moments so that it was soft enough because carrots and broccoli, if it's hard and you eat it raw, it's hard to get the antioxidants out to be digested. If again, you just put a little heat and make it almost like in Italian, it's called al dente, where it's just a little soft, but a little hard. It's perfect because then it breaks open so that you can then digest the antioxidants. But good stuff you have here. Why, thank you. And I can't, I am so excited. I'm already prepping for like our Thanksgiving meal. I'm a weirdo like that. It's only October. We still have Halloween to come forward, but. I can't wait for a pumpkin pie, a healthy one, a healthy one. Well, we just appreciate everybody. And and if people want to now, I mean, you help and you're such an amazing life partner and wife. We're on so many different, we've been blessed on so many different platforms. Tell people how they can find us. Yeah, so you can find us um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and you're Peter on and Nielsen, LinkedIn, yep. Twitter, LinkedIn, Peter Twitter. and Nielsen. Yep. And you can also email us if you have any suggestions or questions, Peter at PeterNielsen.com. And of course, if you want to see us live for the video, or not live, but recorded for yeah. the video podcast, you can find us on YouTube. Yes, and also uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Blog Talk Radio, um, iTunes wherever you listen to your podcast you'll be able to find us and we just appreciate you and as the name of this show living with purpose we want you to live your best days that are in front of you we're all going through stuff we all have you know different places that we are on on this journey called life 
but don't betray yourself, you know, speak life into yourself. Words create life or death. And no matter what people are, are talking about you, no matter where your financial or your health is, speak life into yourself. Put your shoulders back, your chest out, and, and just say, I'm going to be healed. You know, I'm going to win. I'm going to reconcile. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to be that successful dad or husband. And it's amazing when you truly fill your brain up with that. That's what you walk into. If you start talking about, I'm never going to, you know, break this addiction of food or cocaine or alcohol, or it's impossible for me to work out or stop smoking, you're not going to. So our hope in prayer is that you truly turn the page. Stop holding on to toxic waste. Let it go because God's got something amazing in store from you. And he is the promise keeper in so many of us. We fall short because we don't believe in his faith enough to realize that that due date is closer than you think. And then what do we do? We settle. We live in fear. And we're the dog chasing the car. And guess what? The dog never catches the car. So don't be that statistic. Don't be that. Champion your own life. And I want each and every one of you to seize the moment of each and every day. And until next week, it's Joyce and Peter, and it's living your purpose. That's what it's all about.